So we've reached the end now of um, vectors, 3D vectors. It wasn't too much complication, to be honest. Um, what I'd like you to do is have a little bit of practice on a few questions on the mixed exercises um, from the textbook. Um, there's quite a few there, and I've picked eight questions. It's actually seven questions plus the challenge. Um, but I guess the challenge question is, of course, a question, so that's eight questions. Um, and what I'm going to do is... So I'm obviously not going to be really teaching or covering lesson content. Um, I just want to give you the eight questions and you try and work through them. But what I'll do is um, I'll flash up each question, um, give you a chance to pause it and do it yourself without needing any help. And then if you choose to keep listening, I'll try and give you a hint. So a bit similar to how I usually do, but I'm, I'm telling you now, I'm methodically going to give you um, at least one hint for each uh, question if you choose to listen to it. And then obviously after I've, I've given you that, um, I'll then show you the answer. So yeah, let's let's get started and let's take a look at the first of these eight questions. Okay. So as I said, if you want to just, you know, make me be quiet, you just want to pause it and have a go at the question first, please do so now. Uh, if you don't want a hint, pause the video now. Okay, and if you do want a hint, um, remember that if you're finding uh, the distance from P to Q, you effectively need to find the difference between these two vectors. So take the coordinates of one away from the other, square them, add them, square root. And that gives you uh, something which you know is equal to root 14. Um, and then as a, another little sort of trick to that, don't bother square rooting at the end. Instead, just say it's equal to 14. So find the difference, square the coordinates of the difference, total them, add them up, and say it's equal to 14. Solve that quadratic equation. It's a quadratic. Presumably, presumably you'll get multiple answers, um, as it says in the question. What are the possible values of A? Okay, and uh, let's take a look at the answers. Five and six. Okay, next question. If you don't want a hint, pause the video now. Okay, and my hints, if you choose to need them. 6a, fairly basic. Find the difference of each coordinate in question. For pq, do q minus p. For pr, do r minus p. For qr, do r minus q. For part b, just uh, square in coordinates, total them, square root for each of these values that you just found in part a. Um, for part c, Use either cosine or sine rule, whichever one is relevant. Um, look those up again if you've forgotten how to use them. You need to use either cosine or the sine rule. Okay, uh, so try and finish off that question if you haven't already. And let's look at the answers. There we go. Okay, next question. Don't want a hint? Pause the video now. Okay, my hint for this one is um, you've been given two of the sides in vector form and you know it's a triangle, therefore you should be able to find in vector form um, the missing side, which is AC. So first step, find AC in vector form and then find the size of uh, each side of that triangle, the magnitudes. And then finally use... Uh, and you choose the appropriate one, either sine rule or cos rule. That is to say the sine or the cosine rule. Okay, and let's look at the answer. There we go, 31.5 degrees. Okay, next question. Okay, I quite like this one. Um, see if you can do it without a hint. Might be a bit tricky, but give it a go. You can pause the video now if you don't want a hint. Okay, and if you need a hint, um, remember that the 
lines you've been given are that one there, AB, this one there, AC, as vectors, you should be able to find this one here, BC, as a vector. Then you'll, because you know the vectors, you know their lengths, and therefore you should be able to find, using either cosine or sine rule, this angle. Uh, oh, I've drawn it in yellow there. Uh, I guess I'll have to go in red. Uh, you'll be able to find that angle. Or I suppose any of the other angles, but let's go say that one. If you know the angle and you know two sides of a triangle, you can find the area. And then from there, you can find the parallelogram. Okay, give that a go if you haven't quite finished it yet. And when you're ready for the answer, let's take a look. Did you manage to get it? 184. Well done if you did. Okay, right. We're getting to tricky stuff now. Proving questions. Proof questions. Sort of the essence of mathematics. This is what shows that you really, truly understand and can solve a problem. You're not just a calculating machine doing things that any old calculator could do or any sort of advanced um, website or scientific calculator. Um, only, you know, humans are really that good at proving things. So it's a skill you've got to try and learn and practice on. Let's see if you can do it. See if you can do it without a hint first. If you can, give that a go. You can pause the video now. Okay. So, um, we need to prove that they meet at a point and bisect each other. First of all, in case you have problems visualising this, remember a tetrahedron, it's basically, um, uh, I guess, a pyramid shape. Right, so, uh, except the pyramid uh, has four faces, four triangular faces, but they might not be equilateral or even scalene triangles. They can be any sort of distorted triangles, but they the four triangles come together to make a pyramid shape. Um, the picture they've drawn makes it look a bit like the triangles are sort of similar. Um, not not mathematically similar, but sort of literally the same triangle. Um, that may or may not be the case here. Okay, so this, this works in general for any tetrahedron. Um, that's the point of proving it. But um, this is effectively a pyramid shape. Uh, what I would suggest is if you were struggling with this, before you look at the answer, first try and, and do it again, considering what I'm telling you now. Um, give a name to this point where we're claiming that they all cross. Okay, uh, The solution ends up using the letter X, so I'm going to do that as well to avoid confusion. But you could call it whatever you like. So let's say this is a point, capital X. Uh, now we, we need to prove that um, it lies this point X, we need to prove that it lies on the PQ line, which definitely exists. There's definitely a line going between this point P and Q. It lies on the SR line or RS line, and it lies on the TU line. We want to show that X lies on all three of those. And we also want to show that it's halfway along in each case, because we're looking for a bisection. So the first part of the hint is give this a name. My second part of a hint is to say, right, come up with an expression for the for px for, um, let's pick the lower letter in the alphabet in each case, rx and tx. So I've taken three points. Um, P is at the end of one of the lines, the PQ line. R is at the end of the RS line and T is at the end of the TU line. So these, these sort of correspond to the three different lines. Find an expression for each of these um, in terms of A, B, and C. And final part of the hint before I let you try and finish this. Remember, you know for a fact, wherever PX is, if it is in fact on the PQ line, then you know there is some letter um, let me choose the same letters as the answer. I think they've used R, S, and T. So this, I say letter, I should be a bit more specific. This is a constant, right? This number R times PQ 
okay, some fraction, is going to give me px. I don't know what r is yet, but if I take that pq vector here and multiply it by the correct fraction r, I'll end up with px. Same direction, just smaller magnitude. Likewise, um, some other number, s times um, the rs vector, will should give me the rx factor, uh, rx vector, and some number t times the uh, the remaining line. What was it? Uh, capital T u. Cap that's a capital U. That will give me the tx vector. Just so you don't get confused with the letters, the little r, the little s, and the little t have zero, absolutely nothing to do with the capital letter versions. Uh, it's just because there's a lot of stuff going on in this diagram. So we've got a lot of letters flying around. But um, capital letters are points. Lowercase letters bold, A, B, C, these are vectors. And these three letters that I've just invented, 3S, uh, sorry, R, S, and T. How did I read that as a three? R, S, and T, um, they are constants. Okay, so we've got three things going on here. We've got points, we've got vectors, we've got constants. This, however, that I've written down here is uh, entirely factually true for wh wherever this x is. Um, doesn't matter where it is. But now, your next step, I promise this hint is coming to an end soon, is to find PQ and RS and TU in terms of the three vectors you know, A, B, C. Then you'll get an expression for PX, RX, TX in terms of A, B, C and RST. And from there, you need to try and find then what are these values? What is this R, S and T? And once you find the correct values, you should hopefully be able to see why it does in fact then prove that they bisect. Okay, I'm gonna leave the hint there. Try and finish the question yourself, even if you have already tried, in light of what I've just said. You know, give it your all before you look at the answer. Um, yeah. But uh, I'll, I'm going to skip to the answer now. Don't look unless you've had a genuine attempt. Okay. This looks horrendous. If, if you've just looked at the question and then thought, I've no idea what I'm doing, and then you look at this, uh, it's probably not going to help. So this, this makes a lot more sense if you have, in fact, tried, tried it yourself first and then specifically tried the hint that I've told you. Um, it's just... You know, ultimately, this is all just mathematical notation and language to describe what hopefully is a fairly intuitive idea, which is that if you come up with three different ways of describing the same point, and they all agree, um, then you found you found that the point does in fact um, intersect all three of those lines that correspond to those three routes that you picked, those three paths. Um, yeah. Uh, try and try and process the the proof if you didn't manage to do it yourself. Any questions about this one? Do let me know um, in the chat. Okay, let's look at the next question. Okay, this one's uh, hopefully a bit of an easier one. Have a break from the previous proof one. Try and do it yourself first. Pause the video now. Okay, and my hint, which I suppose is just going to be an outline of what you need to do. Find the resultant force. Add together the three vectors. Um, find the acceleration as a vector by using F equals MA. Then convert that acceleration vector into an expression which gives you the magnitude Square the, square the components, add them together, square root. And then in fact, don't even bother with the square root, but just say the whole thing is equal to 3.5 squared. And then solve, and you'll get the possible values of B. You probably have a quadratic. Okay, let's take a look at the answer. You should hopefully get either one and 17 over 3. So both of those are, are possible answers. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Last uh, proper question before the challenge. Hopefully it's not too many. Um, 
yeah, we'll see how you've done. Right, let's take a look at this one. Um, you've got a base jumper, they're jumping off a building, there's some forces acting on them, and you're asked a few questions about this. Uh, if you don't want any hint, you can pause the video now. And if you do want a hint, uh, some hints for each part. So for part A, um, part A is more of an explanation question. Uh, you can justify it by thinking about um, which direction has the, m the greatest motion. In other words, which way, which way is the base jumper moving? Um, you know, you've got various directions in 3D space that could be moving. Which direction will be the greatest uh, change in their motion? And then how can you then take that fact and convert that into an explanation as to why the force is greatest along that line? Uh, for part B, uh, remember, you've been given two forces, wind, W, and uh, air resistance, F. And there's a third force, which is the weight. So you need to find the weight of this uh, base jumper as a 3D vector. So two of those components will be zero, and the third component will be uh, something you have to calculate based on the fact that you know that G is 9.8 and their mass is 50, so what's the weight? Okay. Once you have that third vector, add it to these two and you've got the resultant force. Uh, part C. Um, what can we do? Uh, part C is basically SUVAT, I think, and you just need to take that acceleration, or sorry, take the resultant force that you found in part B. From resultant force, you can get acceleration as a vector, and from that acceleration vector, you can get the magnitude of their acceleration. Or in fact, hang on, let me just reread this again. Ah, what you'll want to think about is uh, you're looking at the distance, that distance of, oh, let's see, hang on, I'm try this distance one from landing. Okay, no, yeah, indeed, you want to find the magnitude of the acceleration, and that will be your A. Okay, because it, the distance 180, that's not necessarily the height which they've gone through vertically, that is just the distance they travelled in 3D space. Um, and therefore, it's a distance which takes place along this line of acceleration. So find the magnitude of the acceleration and use a bit of SUVAT. So then let's uh, take a look at the answers. There they are. Okay, and then our final question, challenge question. Um, it's actually not too difficult, really, if you can understand what's going on in the terminology. Find a counterexample. There will be an infinite amount of them. If you don't want a hint, you can pause the video now. Okay, and if you're staying for the hint, uh, I'll give you one word. Coplanar. So can you find three vectors that are coplanar? Okay, and let's take a look at the answer. There we go. So uh, just to be clear, this is not the answer in the sense of um, it, you have to have picked these three. You could have picked three actually very different looking vectors, but as long as they are three vectors which lie in the same plane, then the result, the resulting equation will be one in which the coefficients of ABC do not line up. So in this case, they've found one particular example out of the infinite possibilities. Um, when you plug this specific set of ABC into the, the equation, you get something that looks like this, which is true, it's totally valid, but the coefficients don't line up, which is fine. That's what happens when three vectors are coplanar. If they're not coplanar, then the coefficients will line up. Cool. All right, we'll leave it there.